What is going down, tech community? What a freaking hot mess NVIDIA has gotten us into. My name is Matthew with the MacGyver 7 channel. If you're brand new, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing. One of the big issues that this brand new driver has gotten to us is a drop out clean install almost required. When you look at the control panel, it looks brand new, which we'll look at for a split second. We're gonna be reviewing the patch notes and lining up some benchmarks to see what has actually improved. And surprisingly enough, this driver doesn't really win. It's actually the last driver that kind of wins for performance, but they are introducing the new 3060 series and a whole bunch of other stuff. So let's get to the tech news, shall we? First and foremost, for people that are brand new, I will have this, the technical release notes right here. But personally, the way I like to just consume them you can go over here where the download which i'll have a link as well coming into that which they say that there's some added support for the dlss on certain games on top of the situation of our lovely new gpu that no one can buy but when you turn over here you start to see a little bit more that's one of the reasons why i like doing it digging deep and seeing actually what is going on in the actual physical realm so DLS obviously is going to get like a nice situation for some games and then we're going to look at our studio now, on top of the driver that happened in February there's some enhanced top renders so people that are creators they're going to have a lot more use of the RTX 30 series and some other situations going from desktops to laptops on top of the gaming technology that comes in and that we've already covered we can see new features and other changes that add support for the following GPUs one of the very popular GPU for this series. Then you look at this CMP 40 HX and the 30 making the list for like some support. Now things that they're gonna go over that they've said that they've already kind of like enhanced G-Sync in general has for as far as Hitman and the Edge of Eternity, the games and experience in shutters at lower FPS uh, using the hardware accelerator in the GPU mode. Now that is something in an ecosystem that we will be looking at with our benchmarks that they finally have gotten to a really good kind of steady ecosystem with Windows. Please don't change that Windows, please. For love of all of humanity, I just gave you a compliment. Take it, run with it. Um, but let's go ahead and take a little peek at the benchmarks before we get right back to the patch notes. Now, as I have the highlighted driver that was successful, the one that accelerated a little bit more than the rest, and you will see some bumps and bruises. Um, there is percentage drops, like a lot. If you look at situations of what ends up happening for the GPU within the newer driver with the hardware accelerator on, it literally just tanks by percentage, which is crazy. All the other ones are like linked almost, give or take within a few points. So there is something to be said with what they said. Hardware accelerator off is going to win, hands down, AMD, Nvidia, any GPU right now, the ecosystem is kind of like, it, it doesn't really matter, just leave it off. I think that's what they're doing by default because most people aren't having it off and then they notice a toggle of FPS back and forth. So they should just work hardware acceleration into the Windows ecosystem that applies and links to the applicable PCIe links to GPUs. It's not complicated, I would think, but apparently it is. Um, moving on, that's our, our sneak peek. Let's go back to the batch notes. As we start out with the great area for as far as Vulkan apps and the performance drops that occur within the G-Swing switching between full screen into the window mode in game settings. The aisles for as far as the free sync not supporting for this game, you have some other experiences where they cannot be recorded, which is kind of a bummer when you're trying to actually physically be an editor or just stream directly whatever you need to like that is a crutch that you don't need in your life for is the foundations and vulcan the applications crash for as far as the launch in windows 10 and the version of 1803 a very old school version we are our, our, um, on a crazy version nowadays and i definitely suggest to upgrade it's not that bad they have made some good fixes but it's windows there's going to be bumps and bruises depending on what combination of gpu cpu and motherboard you have Looking at the Blu-ray, which comes into after the wallpaper engine may crash in startups after the resume from sleep, who would have thought? Resting, it just destroys itself. The flickering in Blu-ray comes down to the playback for the HDMI. Several desktops applied the flickering for as far as the vertical V-Sync, utilizing the 3D for as far as the settings. Uh, Ampere comes down in Chrome and Edge and experiencing random TDR when browsing, meaning that it is basically pegging the crap out of that. And one way you can do that is control alt delete your system, go inside of over here, and you're instantly gonna be able to pull this up. I know that's a little bit of a crazy thing. I just tanked my CPU for a split second, but you can see. You can look at your memories of everything. So you control alt delete, go through that way, go to your GPU, and you'll notice that if you open up a browser like I have, I'm recording, I'm 
producing in 4K. It's a lot of crazy crap. This is what happens. As we come down to the very end for as far as several desktops having the flickering V-Sync we've already went over and the Chrome LG comes into play. And not only for the recognized as G-Sync compatibility display, it's not having a good day. Now it should. All these issues that we're covering should be fixed. So definitely if you have not seen the performance and leave a what you have for CPU and GPU down in the comments down below, I would hear volumes with your wisdom and experience and what you're experiencing. For as far as the sound in the RTX and the 30 series, the PC may display no signal in the message when enabling the surround sound. That's not going to be around that good. But looking at for as far as what we can see for the maximum graphics power, which was an issue in the control panel, which you can easily get to like this. As you can see, my desktop pokes out in the back. Just click here. This is also a good way to check out what version you have. One of the issues that I ran into when looking at what was happening, you can go to your system information. You'll basically be able to tell everything from there. It should be fine. What you want is your management right up here. You're going to go down here and then you're going to scroll down. You'll see a lot of cool options and then there'll be power. Eventually, you'll just come down to the power management and prefers performance. You can select that and go through a few different settings, adaptive, optimal, and then you'll hit apply down over here. With that being said, that's the very end of our patch notes and it's back to our benchmarks. Now, where you won't see a big percentage drop inside of the DirectX 12 1080p department, 4K will be struggling as we pointed out for as far as hardware accelerator off and on. Again, hardware accelerator off wins with a brand new driver, but fails with it on for the older driver. So it's pretty much the situation. Don't use hardware accelerator. It's, it's just, it's not a good thing right now. Like the system's balanced, but it's not balanced well enough. So summary on DirectX 12, not too hot, but let's go ahead and take a look at our Port Royale. Actually, surprisingly, the old driver kicks ass around the board. As you can see, it fails, not by a percentage, but by at least 100 points hardware accelerator off and on. And that's what you should be seeing, even with the hardware accelerator off winning, considering that the old driver is on the left, new driver is on the right, hardware accelerator on is on the top and hardware accelerator off is on the bottom so you can look at these charts for returning community members you know exactly how i flow but for most people this far in you can kind of see what the charts are looking at now we'll be known to direct x 11. i've cleared a few of the situations out of the roll 4k is on the table and we're eating it consuming it and as we can look at it, there's not a lot that has changed. Driver to driver, old driver wins, hardware accelerator off. Looking at situations as they unfold for extreme and as we get down to the bare 1080p with fire strike, and this is where you see it get really strange. Hardware accelerator off and on, well, it's completely different. With a new driver, it tanks. With the old driver, it accelerates and wins overall. With the new driver with hardware accelerator on, well, it kind of competes with the new, but with the old, it kind of slides back. This is what would look healthy in a situation, the older driver. That's why I'm saying this, it's the added support. I'm not seeing a lot in benchmarks. And this brings us to our final test, everyone. And this is why you say the old driver saves the day. As you can see, 1% is getting the leap. And that's pretty good for everything looking at for fire strike as you compare it to the new driver where it, you are sitting at a different percentage now a lot of the other ones again you'll look at the hardware accelerator off and it gives up a fighting chance but for 500 points more and you're looking at your literal points of graphics scores going up a lot end of the day what saves the day is the old driver so do you need to install this if you have a new 3060 yes probably if you're having some of the performance issues that we covered yes probably but if you're not having any of those and now you have a whole slew of new drivers a DDU, I'll have a link down below and on top so you can very well easily utilize that or do a clean install, which I'll also have linked during the process. I had to install it twice in order for this to actually perform well with a newer driver. So that is why I am suggesting the 461.40 over the 461.72. All right, everyone, have a very nice day. See you guys and gals in the near future. And if you are new, hit that subscription. It is brand newly free. 
at the situation of always in my channel. And you'll always get tech news around the clock when it definitely comes up and what the honest opinions of what drivers are versus what the bot ads of what these corporations are doing. Like if anyone's watched a lot of the stuff that's going on in the world, sometimes Nvidia can be a little bit sour with giving GPUs out and wanting a very bot review, which isn't honest. So this driver sucks. End of the day, the old driver wins.